Pool Lisney is a large coastal town and seaport in the county of Dorset, on the south coast of England. The town is 33 kilometers, 21 miles, east of Dorchester, and adjoins Bournemouth to the east. The local council is borough of Pool and was made a unitary authority in 1997, gaining administrative independence from Dorset County Council. The borough had a population of 147,645 at the 2011 census, making it the second largest in Dorset. Together with Bournemouth and Christchurch, the town forms the southeast Dorset conurbation with a total population of over 465,000. Human settlement in the area dates back to before the Iron Age. The earliest recorded use of the town's name was in the 12th century when the town began to emerge as an important port, prospering with the introduction of the wool trade. In later centuries, the town had important trade links with North America and at its peak in the 18th century it was one of the busiest ports in Britain. In the Second World War, the town was one of the main departing points for the Normandy landings. Poole is a tourist resort attracting visitors with its large natural harbor, history, the Lighthouse Arts Center and Blue Flag Beaches. The town has a busy commercial port with cross-channel freight and passenger ferry services. The headquarters of the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, RNLI, are in Pool, and the Royal Marines have a base in the town's harbor. Despite their names, Pool is the home of the Arts University Bournemouth the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra and a significant part of Bournemouth University. History The town's name derives from a corruption of the Celtic word bala and the Old English word pool meaning a place near a pool or a creek. Variants include pool, pole, poles, pole, pole, poleman, and poolman. The area around modern pool has been inhabited for the past 2,500 years. During the 3rd century BC, Celts known as the Duratriges moved from hilltop settlements at Maiden Castle and Badbury Rings to Heathland around the River Froome and Poole Harbour. The Romans landed at Poole during their conquest of Britain in the 1st century and took over an Iron Age settlement at Hamworthy, an area just west of the modern town centre. In Anglo-Saxon times, Poole was included in the Kingdom of Wessex. The settlement was used as a base for fishing and the harbour a place for ships to anchor on their way to the River Froome and the important Anglo-Saxon town of Wareham. Poole experienced two large-scale Viking invasions during this era. In 876, Guthrum sailed his fleet through the harbour to attack Wareham, and in 1015, Canute began his conquest of England in Poole Harbour, using it as a base to raid and pillage Wessex. Following the Norman conquest of England, Poole rapidly grew into a busy port as the importance of Wareham declined. The town was part of the manor of Canford, but does not exist as an identifiable entry in the Doomsday Book. The earliest written mention of Poole occurred on a document from 1196 describing the newly built St. James's Chapel in La Pole. The lord of the manor, Sir William Longs P sold a charter of liberties to the Burgesses of Poole in 1248 to raise funds for his participation in the Seventh Crusade. Consequently, Poole gained a small measure of freedom from feudal rule and acquired the right to appoint a mayor and hold a court within town. Poole's growing importance was recognized in 1433 when it was awarded staple port status by King Henry VI enabling the port to begin exporting wool and in turn granting a license for the construction of a town wall. In 1568, Poole gained further autonomy when it was granted legal independence from Dorset and made a county corporate by the Great Charter of Elizabeth I. During the English Civil War, Poole's Puritan stance and its merchants' opposition to the ship money tax introduced by King Charles I led to the town declaring for Parliament. Poole escaped any large-scale attack and with the Royalists on the brink of defeat in 1646, 
the parliamentary garrison from Poole laid siege to and captured the nearby royalist stronghold at Corfe Castle. Poole established successful commerce with the North American colonies in the 16th century, including the important fisheries of Newfoundland. The trade with Newfoundland grew steadily to meet the demand for fish from the Catholic countries of Europe. Poole's share of this trade varied but the most prosperous period started in the early 18th century and lasted until the early 19th century. The trade was a three-cornered route, ship sailed to Newfoundland with salt and provisions, then carried dried and salted fish to Europe before returning to Poole with wine, olive oil, and salt. By the early 18th century Poole had more ships trading with North America than any other English port and vast wealth was brought to Poole's merchants. This prosperity supported much of the development which now characterizes the old town where many of the medieval buildings were replaced with Georgian mansions and terraced housing. The end of the Napoleonic Wars and the conclusion of the War of 1812 ended Britain's monopoly over the Newfoundland fisheries and other nations took over services provided by Poole's merchants at a lower cost. Poole's Newfoundland trade rapidly declined and within a decade most merchants had ceased trading. The town grew rapidly during the Industrial Revolution as urbanization took place and the town became an area of mercantile prosperity and overcrowded poverty. At the turn of the 19th century, nine out of ten workers were engaged in harbor activities, but as the century progressed ships became too large for the shallow harbor and the port lost business to the deep water ports at Liverpool, Southampton and Plymouth. Poole's first railway station opened in Hamworthy in 1847 and later extended to the center of Poole in 1872, effectively ending the port's busy coastal shipping trade. The beaches and landscape of southern Dorset and southwest Hampshire began to attract tourists during the 19th century and the villages to the east of Poole began to grow and merge until the seaside resort of Bournemouth emerged. Although Poole did not become a resort like many of its neighbors, it continued to prosper as the rapid expansion of Bournemouth created a large demand for goods manufactured in Poole. During World War II, Poole was the third largest embarkation point for D-Day landings of Operation Overlord and afterwards served as a base for supplies to the Allied forces in Europe. 81 landing craft containing American troops from the 29th Infantry Division and the U.S. Army Rangers departed Poole Harbor for Omaha Beach. Poole was also an important center for the development of combined operations and the base for a U.S. Coast Guard rescue flotilla of 60 cutters. Much of the town suffered from German bombing during the war and years of neglect in the post-war economic decline. Major redevelopment projects began in the 1950s and 1960s and large areas of slum properties were demolished and replaced with modern public housing and facilities. Many of Poole's historic buildings were demolished during this period, particularly in the old town area of Poole. Consequently, a 6-hectare, 15-acre, conservation area was created in the town center in 1975 to preserve Poole's most notable buildings. Mm.